me, they had all these volunteers, um, phone calls, and this and that, and they had, yeah. they had, uh, I can't remember what the name is. They always they say that, that's interesting. like scouts at the Air Force base, and so they were allowed to be there, and reporting into their sort of central station. I mean, yeah, I think maybe you're right. We're, we're getting our own little team. We've got some really good people around us, and I'm kind of happy about that. So we've got some good people that we do communicate with. It's so true. This is now our own little version of it. But it, it's tough. Yeah. One thing I wanted to point out uh, while I'm thinking of this is... Yeah. <laughs> Truthfully, my story will end in this channel if you hear it, because you will not believe it. Imagine somebody trying to join the United States Marines and pass an all-military entrance processing site test, physical, and mental, but yet because he concluded about the alien the, and the existence and the proof of the aliens, you did not join. There's a catch. I have multiple sclerosis and I didn't join it. I'm That's the expensive one, it's made of gold. Come. The cheap one works the same. It costs $25, give or take. Check it on eBay. Patrick Flanagan and then the medallion. The medallion they sell there. Looks like a tetrahedron, multiplies times two. And it gives you the mental image mentally. Just send me the link if you get to eBay or you want to. Like, that's, uh, like, they were just coming out of World War II, but they were also in a very 
strictly uh, technological materialist mindset, and there was no high strangeness that the, these folks are really dealing with. Um, and there was this total trust as well in their system. So they were really inclined to believe their government, like. Mm. No crash retrievals, all that's nonsense. Are you talking about the 50s or the 70s? Well, the, the okay. 50s up to the 70s. Okay. Things started really changing in the 70s. You know, that's really where you start seeing ufology begin to go through its real evolution. Right, because um, I was reading uh, something that he wrote about where he was speaking about the divide within ufology. Oh, yes. Yeah. We he didn't use the term ufology. Um, he was just saying how there was this, this is when the paraphysical yes, yes, yes. versus physical right. argument was becoming really real. That's right. So when you're saying there wasn't really high strangeness, that's why I was asking when, because they, they were starting to dig into that and... Um, no, that's true, that's true. I mean, even like Valet and Keel by the late 60s. Right, was it interdimensional? That's, yeah, absolutely. You know, and so, uh, but... Um, they were taking some serious baby steps, but yeah, they were doing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, Keel had this idea of uh, what he called ultra-terrestrials. Right. You know, because he was thinking like, these beings are really working at a level beyond, mm -hmm. and ballet was, was going there too, so, mm -hmm. um, but compared with later years, I just think it's it's gone into a, a much more involved uh, state, I mean, there were, back then there were, a, there were a few, but it was, it did cause a divide, you're right. Yeah, he, he was writing right. about that, right around the time, I think it was around 1980, he was writing, yeah. sort of reflecting back on the conference, and... That one costed me five dollars. If you can get it on eBay, you will do the Stephen Greer meditation easily because when you touch the pyramid with your eyes closed, you can see the sign in the pyramid mentally inside. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm going to close it down. I'm going to close it down. So, I'm going to close it down. 